What's up guys? I'm glad that you're here on Sunday morning. Why don't you guys go ahead and stand up and let's worship. Racing a car, are you? Yeah, look at the cool lights on my new race car. Those lights sure are fun, it's true. But did you know that you can be a light too? 
Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? Oz got a Bible story for me and you. All right, guys, the race is about to begin. Now, when the light turns green, that means go. Are you ready? Go! <laughs> oh, hi friends! I'm Carrie, and it is so great to see you. My dog Stormy Jane and her friend Goldie are doing races today. Do you like to race? I do too! Do you know when you're in a race or in a car what the green light means? Yes, a green light means go! But what if it changes from a green light to a red light? What does that mean? Oh, whoa, 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 stop! <laughs> well, yeah, the red light means stop. Great race, you guys. Here's a treat. <laughs> Jesus told a story about how we can be like a green light. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> oh, you guys do too? Well, okay. Here comes the story. So the true story about Jesus begins with him talking to a huge group of people. Jesus told them he wanted them to go out and love people so that they would know God and praise him. And Jesus really wanted them to understand, so he gave them a picture of a light. Do you know what this is? A light bulb, that's right. And what does a light bulb do? It shines. Look at that, wow. Well, Jesus said that when we love others, it's like we are a shining light that shows everyone God loves you. He really loves you. We can love others by helping them, by sharing, and by saying kind words. When we don't love others, it's like we're covering up our light. Wait, where'd the light go? Everyone say, no, don't cover it up. Ready? No, don't cover it up. Jesus said, let your light shine. <gasps> and we don't have to wait to let our light shine, do we? We can love like Jesus and we can start now, look everybody, we got the green light. Okay, start your engines. We can go, go, go and be a light and love like Jesus. <laughs> oh, hey there, Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who can love like Jesus? I can love like Jesus. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can love like Jesus? I can love like Jesus. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. All right, I'm going to go love others. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. When we love like Jesus, we can all be lights, me and you too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, how cool is that? When we love like Jesus, we can shine like a bright light to everybody around us. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you didn't say got it, get it? Got it! Good! I can't wait until my friends get here. I'm gonna share my car with them so that I can be a light too. Everybody, start your engines. Love each other as I have loved you. John 15, 12. Hey Calvary Kids, welcome to another edition of our game show and today everyone gets to play. If your family is interested in playing one of our games, feel free to email me at the email address listed here and we'll get you signed up for a future week. Are you ready to play Bible verse or superhero? Good, because I am. The rules are simple. I'll read a quote and you get to decide if it's from the Bible or from a superhero movie. If you think it's from the Bible, then stand up. But if you think it's from a superhero movie, just sit down. Easy enough, right? Okay, let's begin. With great power comes great responsibility. Remember, if you think this quote is from the Bible, stand up. But if you think it's from a superhero movie, sit down.
Time's up. Are you sitting down? If so, you're right. This quote is from Spider-Man. All right, let's try another. Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. Time's up. Did you stand up? If so, you're right. This is from Job 13:15 in the Bible. Here's the next one. I'm about to go the way of all the earth, so be strong, act like a man. Time's up. Are you sitting down? Because you should be standing. This is also from the Bible. King David said this in 1 Kings 2, 2. Well done. See if you can figure this one out. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. Time's up. Who grabbed a chair to sit in? Because you're right. This quote is from Batman Begins. Here's the next one. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. Time's up. Is everyone standing? because this quote is from Daniel 2.22 in the Bible. Okay, here's the last one. The old order of things has passed away. Time's up. Did everyone sit down? If you did, then jump to your feet, because this is from Revelation 21.4 in the Bible. Super job, everyone. Go ahead and give yourself a high five. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday.
that you're working it out I'm gonna hold up, slow down I'm gonna trust that you're working it out How well do you wait? I totally get it. Waiting is super hard. We all want things we can't have quite yet. To find out the grade you got on that math test, for mom to finish work so you can go for a bike ride together, for the microwave to dink so your popcorn's finally done. Whether you're waiting for four minutes or four months, it can seem like forever. It's tempting to grumble and whine. It's not fair. Nobody else has to wait this long. It can be tempting to jump ahead and try to get what you want without waiting. But trying to skip the wait usually leads to a mess. So take a deep breath and be patient. Ask God for help. Take the extra time to encourage a friend. And when the time is right, you can enjoy what you've been waiting on for so long. Yeah. When you wait without complaining, others can see God at work in you. That's why patience is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Bon appetit, everyone. My name is Graham. I'm dressed like this because I want to know what it feels like to be a real chef. I want to be able to bake a cake that's as tall as me. I want to make chocolate chip cookies that are so gooey the chocolate stretches a full six feet. I want to understand what fondant is. Fondant? Fondant? I want to be able to say the word fondant. But like most things in life, becoming a real chef takes time. It takes patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. And I know a thing or two about patience. I signed up for a baking class six weeks ago that wasn't supposed to start until today. So I have to wait. And today I found out that the class has been postponed for another two weeks because our teacher is sick. It looks like she's going to be okay, but Still, I have to wait some more. So now I'm wondering, what if I never get to go to class? What if it gets postponed again and again and again? What if it stays this way forever? forever. 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 The longer I have to wait, the harder it gets. If only there was some way to make the waiting not feel so hard. <laughs> Maybe there is a way. In today's story, we'll learn about a guy named Simeon who had to wait a long time for God to keep his promise. But Simeon didn't have to wait alone. So, I guess I'll see you soon. I'll just wait here. Oh man, I could really go for one of those gooey chocolate chip cookies right about now. Mmm, chocolate. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he 
made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. The birth of Jesus was unusual in many ways. He entered the world in a shelter with the animals and was celebrated by an entire host of angels. Glory to God in the highest. But Mary and Joseph cared for Jesus as with any child. When he was about six weeks old, they prepared to present him to the Lord at the temple. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? But as Mary and Joseph set out for Jerusalem with their firstborn son, someone was already waiting for them, a man named Simeon, and their stories were about to collide. Simeon had grown up in Jerusalem, faithfully worshiping God. He prayed daily. Lord, help me understand your law. Help me serve you with my whole life. Simeon would have studied the scriptures, words from the prophets from hundreds of years before. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light, Lord? Over the years, Simeon continued to pray, to worship, and to seek God in the temple. God's Holy Spirit was with him. And one day, the Spirit made Simeon a promise. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. Simeon believed the promise and waited in joyful expectation. Will it be today, Lord? Simeon waited some more. Will it be this year, Lord? And then he waited still more. How about this decade? We aren't quite sure how long Simeon had to wait, but when his hair turned snow white, he was still waiting. Soon, Lord. Today, at last, Simeon received a new response. A temple courtyard? I I'm on my way. Uh, where's my cloak? My walking stick? God's spirit led Simeon straight up to the temple mount and into the courtyard. Simeon stood in the center of the courtyard, allowing the voices to wash around him. He wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, but he knew God would reveal it to him. A baby? Simeon turned quickly to see a young couple nearby. The man carried a pair of doves in a small cage, the usual sacrifice after a child was born. The woman cradled a tiny baby in her arms. Joseph, where do we go? Excuse me. Both the man and the woman looked up quickly. May I hold the child? <laughs> well, all right, yes. Simeon took the child gently into his arms. In the eyes of this infant, he saw the face of God, the rescuer, God's promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Overwhelmed, Simeon turned his gaze toward heaven. Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Mary and Joseph stared in amazement. We knew he was special. This. Simeon looked down at the child, then glanced up at Mary and Joseph again. May the Lord bless you both. Gently, Simeon returned Jesus to his mother's arms. After a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see the fulfillment of the promise God had given him so long ago. We don't know for sure how long Simeon had to wait before he got to see Jesus, but it's possible he had to wait for years. We usually don't have to wait years for something to happen, but sometimes when we're waiting, it can feel like years. Sometimes it can feel like forever, ever, 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 ever. Like when you're waiting for your birthday or Christmas, or when you're waiting to feel better while you're sick. I know it's hard to wait, 
But here's the good news. You don't have to wait alone. God is with you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what the whole world is going through. And He knows how it will all turn out. So talk to God. Put your trust in Him. He's going to be with you through everything. In fact, God will be with you forever. So, that's the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember God is with you. I still have to wait for my first baking class. Maybe it'll happen in two weeks, maybe longer. But no matter what, I won't be waiting alone. God will be with me. I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll have some gooey chocolate chip cookies for us to try by then. I wonder if the goo will stretch from me to you. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> see you then. Sit, Zoe, sit. Good dog.